So we spent a good number of videos kind of going over what Pathfinder Society is, maybe what the rules are, what's different from regular Pathfinder, how to play, and a bunch of other things that a player should know, including some of the additional overhead that you might get out of it, as well as for a GM, there's gonna be some additional overhead there. So should you actually play? Well, my name is Don, I'm trying to be the Sly Strategist, and let's go ahead and get into it. So now that we know a little bit more about Pathfinder Society, let's kind of go over some pros and cons of playing Pathfinder Society and getting involved with organized play. And I think I'm actually gonna do the cons first. There are some cons to it. Probably one of the biggest cons that I can see is that it is a little bit hard to get into in the fact that there are some additional rules that you wouldn't run into if you had a regular session, a regular table. We're playing an AP or somebody's homebrew, but you are actually at a table. There is the Organized Play website. You have to record all your information. You have to keep track of what you're doing. When you want to level, you have to pay attention to your achievement points as well as the boons, your faction, your reputation. You have to ensure in your game that you don't have more than three infamy. Otherwise, your character is, for all intents and purposes, going to be dead. And that's kind of just the start of it. There are definitely some overhead things that you have to pay attention to. Is it a lot? Not too much. It sounds like a lot, especially if you've been kind of following along in these past few videos. It sounds like there's a lot, but once you actually read it and you kind of get it, it actually isn't that much. It doesn't take that much additional time. And in truth, it's pretty obvious once you start reading through it and being, oh, well, yeah, that actually makes sense. So it's actually not that hard and it's actually not that much extra. And then I wanna go over maybe the second con and that would be you aren't playing with a established group, an established game master and an established kind of set of reference to work with. So when you go from table to table, you might be playing with totally different people who might have totally different motivations, totally different play styles, or if you are traveling and you want to go play in other countries, different languages, different cultural barriers, various things that could happen. Could that also be a bonus? Oh, definitely, because it also expands your experiences and maybe how you play and how people in other regions, other cultures, other societies would play the same game or play the same situation. So it's a good way to not only broaden your tabletop role-playing experience, but your experience just as a person. So it's not necessarily a full con, but when you have a question, you can look at your GM or message your GM if you're playing virtually, and you can ask them, you know, I'm not sure how this works. How are we going to play this at the table? When you're playing Pathfinder Society, there isn't that overarching rule arbiter that is the GM that can decide what to do. You also might not know from session to session how much the people at your table are going to be role-playing or not role-playing, or whether you have a healer that you know exactly what they're going to do every single turn, or a frontliner that you know is going to work with you to flank or to trip or to grab a certain opponent in order to work together. Once again, the not and con sign of that is, is it makes you a more flexible player. So there is good things to it, but there are definitely bad things. Now onto the pros of Pathfinder Society. One of the big pros of Pathfinder Society is that you can play anywhere, anytime. And when I say anywhere, anytime, I kind of really mean it. There is your local game store, so that gives you a physical table, maybe a group of players that you can get some consistency with, but it's still Pathfinder Society. But if you play online or play virtually, you can play with people from anywhere. And if you happen to be up at two in the morning your time and you wanna play a game of Pathfinder Society, you could probably find a game that is playing somewhere in the world that is gonna fit in with your schedule. So you can definitely play anywhere, anytime. A second pro I have of it is 
If you are always your party's healer, if you are always your party's frontliner, if you are always your party's rogue or maybe damage dealer with ranged or magic, this gives you an opportunity to try other things. If you have a character class or an ancestry or something that you want to try, this is your opportunity to do that because it's kind of, I don't want to say it's no stakes because once you get into Pathfinder Society and you start playing this character and you start leveling and you start kind of developing that character, you're going to get just as attached to it as you would a character at any table. However, this does allow you to experiment a little bit more. The third pro of it is if you are the always GM, if you are the one who always has GM games, this gives you an opportunity to be a player. If you don't necessarily want to be a player, but it's been a long time since you've been a player, this is an opportunity to actually go sit at a table and see how the new rules play out. See how certain situations actually feel to you as a player, as opposed to being a GM. And it also gives you an opportunity to see how other GMs kind of rule situations, how other GMs deal with player interactions and how other GMs deal with difficult situations that you might have a problem kind of relating to because they haven't come up to you because you know your players because you have a standard table and everybody does the same thing they've been doing the whole entire time. It can also give you ideas for maybe new things to bring into your game because you are actually seeing what other GMs will do. On the other side, if you're an always player and never GM, this is, especially if you want to start doing bounties or do quests without even doing a full scenario, you can cut your teeth being a GM with Pathfinder Society, and I'm sure they'd love to have you do it. You can do it in person. You can do it virtually. We kind of covered that now they have all the new season of scenarios are available on Foundry. So you can kind of do it anywhere. And this would be a way for you to kind of see what it's like to actually be a GM without necessarily having to do it with your party. And it allows you to get better and better. And maybe you can have your own little mini side quest thing that you are going to GM, or maybe the next time that your party completes an adventure path or completes a scenario or completes whatever adventure that they're doing, maybe you can come up with a idea for a campaign and you can run it and let everybody kind of switch around what their roles normally are. Now, I do hope you like this video. Once again, this is just my opinion. I personally love Pathfinder Society. And you know what? I hope you like this series on Pathfinder Society. It is a very good system that allows you to do so much more within Pathfinder without necessarily quite so much time investment or the rigor of a regular table. And what I mean by the rigor of a regular table is if you are joining a session with your normal table, you are the cleric, you've been the cleric for the past year and a half, and you're gonna to continue to be the cleric until you're done with this adventure. With Pathfinder Society, you can play a little bit, you can do a little bit extra, you can do a few other things that you don't normally get to do, and you can also try your hand at jamming if that is something you'd like to try. But I do hope you like this video, and if you did, feel free to like, subscribe, or hit that notification bell, but whatever you do, I hope you have a great day and happy adventuring. Thanks.